Hey guys, what is going on? It is your good buddy Sam, and it's time for another exciting Max MSP tutorial. Um, sorry I haven't made a tutorial in a long time. Um, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, first, I just want to plug this coming, uh, so Saturday the 17th, so not uh, not tomorrow, but the, the next Saturday, I'm doing a Max for Live workshop at Harvestworks, um, which in case you don't know, it's a great uh, art and technology nonprofit organization here in New York City. Um, it should be a lot of fun. I'm going to talk about Ableton Live, and I promise if you stop by, it will definitely be worth your while. Um, but anyway, speaking of making America great again, um, you know, in the interest of full disclosure, I should tell you the reason I haven't made a tutorial in so long is because uh, I've actually been been hired as the Max MSP consultant on the Trump campaign, um, Make America Great Again. So I know there's a lot of stigma associated with Donald Trump, but I just want to assure you that he is the candidate for, if you're a computer musician, Donald Trump is the man for you. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but the, the wall to Mexico, for example, it's not only going to be beautiful and great and made of solid gold, but it's also going to be an enormous 400 foot modular synthesizer. Did I say 400 foot? I meant 400 mile modular synthesizer. Try to wrap your head around that. Um, so to celebrate the Trump campaign, I wanted to uh, show you, um, take you behind the scenes of a recent uh, campaign video that um, I've made as, as part of the campaign. So let's start by making a new project. Um, project because you're gonna be pulling in some important media related to Donald Trump. So let's go ahead and make a new project. And I'm gonna call this uh, project make America great again. And the first thing I want to do is pull in a couple assets. Uh, the first asset, um, I have this clip of Donald Trump speaking where I think he makes some really good points. Um, you can use, I'll make this clip available uh, in the YouTube description or you can use your own favorite clip. Um, and let's make a new file and let's just call it make America great. Cool. And now uh, let's just pull this clip in and take a, nope, pull the clip in, take a quick look at this. Make a P window, throw it down there. And you know, just one of those things. When he hired the porn star to do his tape, but now he said he didn't know she was. Oh my God, every word this man speaks is pure poetry. So anyway, there's uh, this clip of Donald Trump. Now, what I uh, want to bring in for this clip is to do a little bit of face detection. Um, so to do that, you're going to want to make sure you're running Mac 7. Come up to the package manager, and you'll see in the package manager that there is a um, not connected. <laughs> hmm. Well, anyway, the, to, the, the package that you're going to want to use is this one, cv.jit. Um, I've already installed it, but this is the computer vision package for Max MSP. So go ahead and install it by pushing the button up here that for you will be installed. And then once you've got that installed, um, we can go about trying to detect Donald Trump's face. So the basic way this works is you make an object called cv.jit.faces. And what this does is it outputs out of this outlet here a matrix of all the faces it detects in the image that comes in. Um, it actually works not on full color images, but on grayscale images. So you need to, um, before this, do a jit.rgb to luma to convert to a black and white image. And then there's another object called cv.jit.faces.draw that actually draws the faces where you put in the left inlet the faces from cv.jit.faces, and in the right inlet, the movie that you want to draw the face detection on top of. So let's play this video. And, you know, and look, there's a rectangle things. around when Donald Trump's face. To do his so one thing you may, I'm gonna, you know, I just find Donald Trump's words so moving that it's actually very distracting. So let's just go ahead and make a little vol zero up here. And, you know, just and just by clicking on that, we can turn the volume down to zero just because the words are so powerful. Um, and I don't want to be distracted by that all through this tutorial. So anyway, you may notice that the frame rate takes a big tank here. That's because doing this face processing is actually um, 
takes a lot of computational power. Um, so what we want to do is scale this matrix down before we actually do this. And I'll show you how to do that. It's very simple. Um, just do a, we're going to need um, a trigger here. And it's going to take two arguments, L and L for list and list. Um, and this is just so we can, what, what comes out of these outlets is just going to be a jitter matrix. Um, but want to do first do something over here and then something over here. So I uh, want to detect the dimensions of this matrix. So we'll do a jit dot matrix info. Um, and that will give us the dimensions of the matrix if we route dim. And then I'm going to take the dimensions of this matrix and scale them down by a factor of five. So we'll do um, vexpr, which um, does operations on a whole list, and f1 or i1 for the dimensions divided by five at scalar mode one, because we're operating on a uh, we're dividing every element in the list by the same value five. And then finally prepend dim. And we'll attach this to a jit.matrix at adapt zero. And this makes sure that this matrix, which will uh, just be taking in, um, uh, is just receiving the, the video matrix here. What comes out will be a scaled down version of the same matrix. And the jit dot, um, the, the at adapt zero makes sure that it doesn't uh, scale back up when it gets in the parent matrix. So this is just. Um, so you can compare the two. Here's what the oh, here's what the two videos look like side by side. You can see this one's all pixelated. Maybe um, anyway, it's just because it's scaled down. All right. So the next step, we've scaled this video down. Next, we make it black and white. Pass it into cv.jit.faces, and now uh, we should be able to see faces on this video. Sure enough, there is the face of the D-man. Very exciting. All right, so now that we have the face coming out of that, uh, I want to use this rectangle of Donald Trump's face and do something useful with it. Um, so I'm going to pull in another piece of media that I have here. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Documents, cycling, no, documents, Max 7, projects. Yeah, here in this project I was working on called um, Potato Face, I have this file, potato.png. I'm going to pull that in here, right click on it, and go to Create Project Local Version. And then if I reveal that in the Finder, you can see this is the image that I'm going to be working with now. Um, I really feel like the potato, it's a heartland crop. Um, it's something that all Americans are familiar with, and it really captures the character of, of Donald Trump. So that's, that's what I'm going to go with here. Um, so we've extracted the face, and then what I want to do is draw that potato right on top of his fat, ugly face. So to do that, um, first we need to import that potato. So we'll make a jit.matrix, and then load mess import movie potato.png and if I double click on this just make sure we sure enough make sure we indeed have that potato in here uh, probably have to bang this there it is there's our potato all right so we've loaded in this picture of the potato and now what I'm going to do is use the destination dimension um, property of this of, of a jitter matrix in order to draw the potato just over the portion of this um, image that corresponds to Donald Trump's face. So um, the destination dimensions, I know this, this video that comes in it happens to be 720 by 720 pixels. I'm going to make a matrix down here for char uh, 720, 720 at use dest dim one. That's very key. So now if we try to take this potato and draw it uh, in this matrix, we won't see anything because we haven't specified the destination dimensions yet. But if we do something like, for example, dest dim start 100, 100, and then dest dim end 300, 300, you'll see that this will draw a little potato in the top left corner of the image down here. And all we need to do is make this source dim start, or dest dim start and dest dim end correspond to the 
coordinates of this rectangle, which is actually super easy. So first we just need to get the um, what comes out of jit.cv.jit.faces. It is a matrix, but we want it as a list. So we can do um, jit.iter1, and that will spit out each cell of the matrix as a list corresponding to the, in this case, corresponding to the, um, the coordinates of this uh, rectangle. So then we take what comes out of there. We do a v expr um, i1 times, uh, we scaled down by a factor of five over here. So now we need to scale back up by a factor of five at scalar mode one. Easy, easy, easy. And then we can do a zl.slice to all these matrices of potatoes just floating around, cluttering up my patch. Um, zl.slice two to split this into the, um, the, the left and top sides and then the right and bottom sides. And we'll just do prepend dest. Or you know what, it might be even cleaner. We can just do destim start dollar one, dollar two, destim end dollar one, dollar two. Or you know what would be even slicker? We don't even need to do, all right, check this out. I'm gonna get rid of the CL slice two. I can go straight into this guy. We'll do destim start dollar one, dollar two. Um, move it up here so you can see. We'll do destim start dollar one, dollar two, comma, dest dim end dollar three, dollar four. Using that comma to split this into two sequential messages. How badass is that? So now we can click on this and then I think we should start to see this potato moving around, maybe? Is this working? Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. We actually have to bang this at every single frame. So that's pretty straightforward. I'll just throw a, uh, up here where we're first, we're doing all this face stuff. Um, this right now is trigger list list. I'll make it trigger um, list, or trigger bang list list. And then I gotta shove these over one. And then we'll just send that bang over here to bang on the potato. And there it is, there's the potato moving to the coordinates of this guy's face. More, oh, this is actually, I typoed, it was. Um, oh, <laughs> it got to the end of the clip. I thought I broke something. All right, cool, so there's the potato um, drawing where this guy's head is gonna be. One thing you'll notice, we're getting all this potato-y cruft in this matrix. Um, that's just because it's only drawing uh, using desk dimensions, it only draws over one portion of the matrix and will leave any other garbage untouched. So I'm just gonna do a set all zero, 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 zero to blank out the matrix um, between every draw. Uh, right, gonna set this value here to just blank out the matrix at every single call. Will this uh, cause a problem? I don't know, let's, throw it, let's do a TB in here just in case. Maybe the, the thing would be mad at me if I didn't do that. There we go, there's that potato right there. And then the last thing that we actually need to do, jit.alphablend at, I think at mode one, and then potato goes in the left and trump goes in the right. And we can get rid of jit draw. We're not, we don't need to see that rectangle anymore. Uh, no, I got it backwards, but that's pretty great. I'm not too disappointed about that. Uh, at mode zero. Oh, and look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. Exactly what we wanted. Um, once in a while, you may notice that the potato disappears for a second. I think those are in frames where it doesn't detect a face. And the way to do that... Um, does this work? Let's give this a try. Nice. Okay, sweet. So what I'll do, I'll make a get adder and connect it to the CV JIT faces. And then uh, this I'll split into a trigger list bang. We'll bang on this get adder number faces. Um, oh, you know what? We don't need a get adder here. We can just do a get and faces. connect that up to this CV JIT faces. And then we'll just make a gate, gate one zero, root and faces. 
and only if faces is equal to one will this gate be open. And that should make it so that we never uh, detect a face, uh, that if the number of faces is zero, this potato shouldn't accidentally leap over to some unexpected place. Sure enough, I think we've done it. Well, that um, about concludes this very exciting, um, I think, I think just to, to kind of sign it off, we should get a nice side-by-side -side here. Yes, I think that, that that'll do very nicely. The, the campaign headquarters will be very happy, I think. To, you know, this, isn't, this is almost right. Something doesn't seem quite right here. I'm going to, I'm going to look at this potato. Let's see, we're in Make America Great Again, Media, Potato. And then maybe something, what if, what if, Yes. 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 I see it now. Save that. Import the potato again. Oh my god, it's a perfect facsimile. What an achievement. Well, this is just, this is a red letter day, an orange letter day, really, uh, for the Trump campaign and for America, if we're being real. Um, Thanks again for watching, guys. I hope that was a useful and interesting uh, tutorial for you. And please, uh, once again, if you're in town, April 17th, I'm going to talk about Max for Life. It's going to be great. Um, very excited to see you there, hopefully. So in any case, take it easy, guys, and I will see you in the next tutorial.